bright beauty every student matters the next natural resources is the mineral that is the soil or the lithosphere that we are discussing here now minerals riches in the soil the surface of the earth are broken down by various physical chemical and some biological processes and these breaking down due to physical chemical and biological processes is known as weathering now what happens the earth's crust is made up of various kinds of rocks hills mountains so on and so forth and we know that there is soil there is sand pebbles stone which comprises the surface of the earth and these have been actually formed from the rocks due to various physical chemical and the biological processes that are carried out now let us see what are the factors which are responsible for the making of soil or for withering the first important is the sun now why sun the sun heats up the rocks during the day so that they expand so during the day due to the heat the rocks expand whereas these rocks cool down during the night and contract because there is no sunlight so the temperature is down and the rocks contracts shrinks this continuous expansion and contraction results in the formation of cracks and thus the rocks breaks up into smaller pieces now remember this is happening in day in and day out it is happening from ages from thousands and millions of years so due to this continuous expansion and contraction results in breaking and cracks in the rocks and thus this further keeps on happening and then they tend to break down into smaller pieces of sand stone and pebbles there are other factors also like it can be winds that these small pieces of rocks are then carried by the winds or by water so on and so forth the next is water water gets into the cracks in the rocks and if it freezes it would cause the cracks to widen because we know that when water gets into when it is freezing it expands and due to the expansion what would happen it would push the cracks further apart flowing water also wears away water even in hard rocks over a long periods of time now this is a very good explanation a very good example you can see in rivers or streams when you see the rivers and streams flowing then you would see that the rocks or the stones are basically rounded or they tend to form a very fine edged now the reason is because of the continuous flow of water these edges the rough edges are been washed out by the flowing river and what stream water for ages and thus it has led to weathering so this is also responsible for the formation of soil so you would see that the rivers which originates in high mountainous areas they tend to carry a lot of silt silt along with them and these small pebbles stones and sand are then deposited in the plain area where they start deposition and we know that how much it contributes to the fertility of the land where this deposition is being done right the next is the wind strong wind erodes rocks down the wind also carries sand from one place to other like water does now we know that it is also this is also another reason why soil erosion happens that when very strong gust of wind blows then it carries the top soil from one place to another and thus we find the formation of soil happening the next is living organism organisms such as lichens while growing on the rocks releases certain chemical substances that causes the rock surface to powder down and form a thin layer of soil now this is a very common thing we know what are lichens they are basically symbiotic organisms algae and fungi they grow together now when they are growing in or on a rock or a mountainous area what happens they tend to secrete some chemicals for digestion now these chemicals tends to act react with the rocks and break down the rocks into small powders so when there would be a gust of wind or water flowing due to rainfall then they carry the water the soil particles from one place to the another other small plants like moss are also able to grow on the surface of rocks and break them into small pieces mosses they are very small plants very small plants which tends to form carpet on the surface of the rocks and then as they grow 
the roots tends to break the surface of the rock into smaller pieces and thus it helps in weathering of the rocks. The roots of big trees sometimes go into the cracks in the rocks and further breaks the rocks. So we see that some of the organisms which are responsible, galaxies, mosses, we have the roots of big trees. It can also be small burrows and crevices that are dug by some animals for their livelihood. This also results in the breaking of the soil. So we see that the formation of the surface of the earth has been due to the factors like the sun, the water, the wind and the living organism. So these are some of the factors which are responsible for the formation of soil on the surface. And we do have lots of agents, lots of erosion agents like wind and water which tends to wash out the topsoil. And these can be prevented by various ways. And one important way is forestation, growing of plants, growing of trees. Because what do they do? They tend to, the roots of these plants tends to hold the soil and thus stop erosion. Other ways can be soil savers. That means you use big huge mats made up of jutes, coils and they can be laid down on places where soil erosion is excessive. And we know the jute, coir, they are biodegradable. So these soil savers are going to give enough time for the vegetation to grow in that particular area and thus prevent soil erosion. There can also be shelter belts. That means in and around the land area, there can be small, low-lying, low-height vegetation being done in the form of shelter belts, which will obstruct the flow of water and the wind for which are responsible for soil erosion. Okay, now you already have seen the different factors that has resulted in the formation of soil. And we know that soil is a mixture. It is a mixture of small particles, soil particles, small rock particles. There are pebbles, stones. Soil also contains what is known as humus. What is humus? Humus are formed by the biodegradation of dead plants and animals. So dead plants and animals are biodegraded. Dead plants and animals which have been biodegraded been biodegraded forms the humus. So the soil is basically a mixture of different particles, humus, okay, different minerals. And also the soil contains microorganisms. So this is what the soil actually comprises of. So when we look into the different parts of the soil, we find that humus contributes a lot into the soil, into the productivity of the soil. More the humus, more would be the nutrient content in the soil and thus the crop production or the vegetation would be plenty. And we know that where the vegetation is more, the availability of animals, birds and other living organisms increases. Similarly, minerals also support into the fertility of the soil. Microorganisms, the presence of microorganisms contribute a lot to the fertility of the soil. Because microorganisms are the ones which, which are responsible for enriching the soil with various nutrients as well as for the biodegradation process. So basically, the top layer of the soil, the top layer of the soil, which contains, which contains humus, minerals, microorganisms, okay, etc. are known as the topsoil. So it is the topsoil or the layer which is supports life, whether it is the life of plant or the life of any other living organism. 
in the form of now when we are saying living organism it means in the form of microorganisms in the form of worms it in the form of beetles small insects so on and so forth fine so that is the topsoil now what happens when this topsoil is so very important for topsoil is very important for both plants as well as for animals okay now these two organisms plants and animals they are very very much dependent on the topsoil and the removal of this topsoil removal of the topsoil is known as is known as soil erosion so basically what is soil erosion soil erosion means the removal of the topsoil the soil which supports plants and the living organisms that dwells and survives in the soil that removal of the topsoil is termed as soil erosion now what happens to what happens when soil erosion takes place when soil erosion takes place the fertile layer of the soil gets removed and thus the soil becomes barren that means it does not support life there would be no growth of vegetation there would be no presence of the living organisms whatsoever that exists in the topsoil fine right? so there are various factors how the soil erosion takes place the most important factor that has been found factors for soil erosion the most important factors that has been found for soil erosion is deforestation tremendous amount of deforestation that are taking place in and around the world is leading to soil erosion now what is deforestation cutting down of trees and plants for uh, for the purpose of human habitation for uh, setting up industries for agricultural sector so on and so forth now when these plants and trees are cut off then what happens the roots which anchors into the soil they basically also protect the soil from being eroded now once these vegetations are cut out these top soil are now devoid of any anchorage and thus they get washed away by winds waters by animals so on and so forth and gradually the level of fertility reduces thereby it becomes barren and does not support life at all there are also other reasons for soil erosion it can be fast moving wind it can be rain fine so these are some of the major reasons why the soil erosion takes place basically we find that soil erosion takes place in little mountainous areas where if the vegetation is less then the moment the rain falls the topsoil gets gets washed out along with the running water so in order to hold it the most important thing is forestation so we can prevent soil erosion or the removal of the topsoil by extensive afforestation that is growing of trees and plants as well as there are other ways how soil savers can be there soil sa soil savers can be uh, laid down in barren land so that it gives enough time for the vegetation to grow thereby helping the soil erosion to be prevented or stopped there can also happen that we put some shelters shed shelters in and around which will also help in checking the soil erosion so these are various types of steps that can be taken up in order to prevent soil erosion the objective of the activity is to demonstrate the role of plants in checking soil erosion the procedure take two identical trees a and b and fill them with soil plant germinated gram seeds in tree a and leave the second tree as such after 6 to 7 days tilt both the trays at an angle with the help of wooden cubes make sure that both the trays are tilted at the same angle pour equal amount of water gently in both the trays and collect the water flowing out of the trays
Now note down the amount of soil collected in the beakers from the two trays. Observation. You would find that the soil in the tray with plants does not get washed down with water. In other words, plants help to prevent soil erosion.